Yeah. I mean, I, I thought that I would probably be a framing device, you know, like talking about this g genetic eye condition that I had that um, resulted in the loss of my peripheral vision and leaving me with minimal night vision and, and, and discussed really why I was searching for these specific kinds of artists and wanting to talk to artists who were either working with uh, severely um, low vision or were completely blind and what their process was like and what I could learn from it. So I did have that idea of like putting that up front, but I didn't, I didn't know that I would be a kind of recurring character that we kept coming back to. You've talked about, and you talk about it in the film, a certain, um, uh, a fear that you had of sort of coming out as visually impaired for some time, specifically because you were a filmmaker, you thought that it would hamper your ability to get opportunities as a filmmaker. Yeah. Um, do you think that any of that played into how much you were going to put yourself in the film as well, that there is still a part of you who is somewhat scared about being as upfront as possible? Yeah. I mean, I think the, the film, I think Vision Portraits really made me be brutally honest about those fears and overcome those fears and that, that idea of myself, you know, on a 50 foot screen with a red and white cane as a character. Like if you're gonna out yourself as visually impaired, like that's a way to do it, right? Like people, people are gonna know, they're gonna see you. And so, you know, I do feel like there are, stigmas and stereotypes about what disabled artists are able to do. And, you know, I, I don't think that people in the industry would nece necessarily come right out and say, we're not gonna hire you because you're visually impaired. But I do think that that, that can become part of the equation when there are a lot of other people vying for that directing gig, you know? So I, I have to be real about the realities of the industry as they exist now. <laughs>